Other predators also chase the moving banquet. Sharks are also powered with a crescent tail. But additional features enhance their performance. Their skin is covered in minute tooth-like structures that overlap. So water slides right off this smooth enamel surface. Muscles attach directly to this external skeleton, so movement converts immediately to thrust. Their lateral line, a unique sense organ, detects the tiny electric impulses from individual fish within a school. Sharks' eyes adjust for low light, vital for hunting sardines. Sharks don't nibble at the edges like game fish. They plow into the middle of the feast. Equipped for speed in the darkness, sharks can take advantage of the mother load. Pupils dilate, and a mirror behind the retina pumps in additional light. Their fishy sixth sense transmits the timing for the strike. Sharks are top-notch hunters, but there's a superior sardine chaser out there. These killers are not fish. They don't react to prey, they control it. A dolphin's trump card is hidden inside it. Their mammalian brain allows them to strategize. They whistle and communicate with each other to plan their attack, giving them speed with purpose. Head on at 46 kilometers per hour and no collisions. There's nothing impulsive about this sardine hunt. Teams are responsible for specific tasks. Some blow walls of bubbles to confuse. Others circle the school to drive fish into a tighter bunch. And another team will swim into the middle of the sardines to feed. Instructions are issued, and the hunt begins. Herded by the dolphins, the sardines are assembled for another assault. It's the airborne division. Plunging down more than three stories, Cape Gannets dive bomb the sardines. Beneath the waves, bird morphs into fish. hold their breath for 40 seconds, so if they don't hit their target on impact, they simply give chase. Speed and surprise outmaneuver their prey. Most fish are swallowed before they return to the surface. Their pace underwater comes from the height they drop. 30 meters up, to be precise. 
When they spot the sardine shoal, their attack begins. Gannets take the gold medal for diving. They strike the water at a bone-crunching 96 kilometers per hour. For maximum acceleration, they streamline their bodies. Wings and feet tuck away, so it's a javelin spear that pierces the water. But it takes more than aerial contortionism to make a diving champion. They plummet head first. That's instantaneous whiplash, fracture and concussion for a human. So Gannett's safety features come standard. Its beak has no external nostrils into which water might be forced. An extra thick skull bone acts as a crash helmet. And air pockets inside the skull protect the brain like bubble wrap. They throw themselves into a backwards dive to slice the ocean. Horizontal momentum flips to a vertical drop. Head and body align in an arrow-like posture. And the shock of impact is absorbed by the air pockets. This five-star safety design works unobtrusively to complement speed. If sardines are near the surface, they're an instant meal. Gannets are also equipped to swim for their supper. Despite their skill in the water, adult gannets don't live at sea. They have to return to the nest. So after a short break, it's time to whip out another specialty. A water takeoff. And not off a calm ocean. The rougher, the better. Webbed feet which disappeared for an efficient dive now push against the ocean like a solid surface. Running on water builds momentum, but it's the wind on the surface that provides the lift. Finding your place in the crowd can be downright dangerous. Seventy thousand gannet nests cram onto a site the size of a football field. To us, every bird looks the same. Every egg is identical. And every chick is just as ugly.
chaos reigns supreme on this rocky outcrop. You can't blame a guy for getting lost. Eyes that accurately target a fish underwater are confused above this ocean of white. He's listening for the all clear from ground control. But it makes sense to maintain a holding pattern till you're certain. There'll be hell to pay if he ends up in the wrong neighborhood. With nests only pecking distance apart, it's a common problem. Intruders pay for their mistakes. This male is lucky to escape with his life and his eyes. Eventually, he sees something he recognizes. His chick and mate, impatient for his return. He's brought lunch in his belly, and his youngster wastes no time helping himself. Ten centimeters of beak rams straight down Dad's throat. It's a good thing he's an expert fisherman. Junior will demolish three bellyfuls of sardine every day for three months. With Dad now on feeding and babysitting duties, Mum must catch the next meal. Taking off from this island is tough with no wind and no space. Gannets aren't equipped for vertical takeoff. So despite the overcrowding issue, They've built an airstrip, 10 meters of runway on the edge of the colony. They have to create their own wind. With a running start, they can generate enough momentum for liftoff. But even that's no guarantee. Quick equipment check, and our mum's ready. Claws grip like cleats for traction. Each downstroke of her wings provides upward thrust. Then the physics of flight kicks in. Lift overcomes weight, and she's airborne. 